We talked about the two Cali sides picking up narrow wins, 1-0, but there were still some some pretty slim scorelines in the remainder of the matches that we're going to be chatting about here. Let's talk about New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC versus Racing Louisville FC. Racing on the road in this one. And go ahead and pick up all three points against Gotham FC. A 1-0 scoreline in this one. Laura Millay getting on the scoreboard for racing. Lisa, I got to I gotta say, we were talking, I want to put it here on the live. We were chatting a little bit about it off mic. And we were talking a little bit about this, this matchup in particular. And even we even talked a little bit about in our in our in our preview a bit. For this game. I think I, 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 please correct me if I'm wrong when it comes to, to the picks in this one. What did I have in the picks for this one? You had a draw between a Racing draw. Louisville and Gotham FC. I had Gotham taking the win in this one. Listen, I'll be honest. I'll always call us out on what we did. Listen, you had Gotham in this one and I had a draw, but that's because I am still not seeing what I would like to see from Gotham. That is a little bit different for me in this match. And I really feel for the team because I was watching this Gotham FC side go up against Racing Louisville. And we're talking about getting more looks in the in the final third, looking a little bit more dynamic, creating chances. We're talking five post shots in this match, which ties a record. They quite got frankly. so close. <laughs> it, it's, again... I cannot come on this show and be like, oh, yeah, it's for lack of effort. That's bull. And I'm not going to say that. I really find myself saying that about any NWSL team. That's simply not true when we're talking about this league. But I got to I, I felt for him a little bit. I was yeah. like, gosh, this like sometimes there's a certain like, look, it's a professional soccer. So there's a certain amount of, of tactics, skill, intelligence, right? All of that that you have to have in this. But it's it's a sport like any other sport. And sometimes luck is involved. And I hate to even do it, but what an unlucky yeah. match when you're looking at some of these opportunities for them. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, I have to give a shout out to Emily Davidson in our chat right now. She says, guys, Gotham is not winning. Stop it. <laughs> Which is <laughs> hilarious Emily. because we keep picking them. She's calling us out on it. I mean, because they have the pieces. Emily, they hit the crossbar five oh. times. Christy Mew has got so I love close. it. I mean, Mew <laughs> should have scored uh, two. I'm going to give her two of the ones that she did not put away. But should doesn't count in soccer that doesn't count as a goal if you should have scored and they did not i i also think racing louisville got really lucky on their goal as well because they know frankly this was a great team build up play like there was a lot of great pieces in this goal for racing louisville it came early in this game 13th minute um which is really good for racing louisville to, louisville to be able to start on that quick front foot um be much more attacking minded which is something kim Bjorkegren is wanting to do this year not be so defensive and for this great team build up goal the ball was moving quick i mean gotham wasn't defending they were defending late they were stepping late throughout the entirety of this game and Jess McDonald gets this ball and it's a beautiful cross across the top of the 18 Lauren Malay wide open on the back post and she's able to, to net this one it actually hits the top the the top netting inside of the goal and really it wasn't that well struck I, I I'm gonna be honest here because it was a lucky bounce that this goal went in for racing Louisville extremely lucky yeah. unlucky excuse me unlucky for Michelle Betos goalkeeper for Gotham who got her first minutes in goal against her old team in racing Louisville and and Betos is an incredible goalkeeper but this this ball kind of bounces over Lauren Malay's foot and she ends up still getting a piece of it and enough of it that it goes into the goal. Um, but then on the Gotham side of things, so many off the post, Christy Mew had a wide open shot, which an incredible ball from Caprice Didasco out of the back, lofted over the top to break all of Racing Louisville's press, which was the best way for Gotham to execute that is just send balls over the top. And, and we saw runs from um, Nahu Kawasumi and, and Monahan. Anamanu got on a lot of balls. And ultimately, Mewis gets on the end of this one. And this is the one that she should have scored. It was her left foot and she just rockets it. It, it was a field goal, good for three points, but not good enough in, in, in soccer on the ground to, to find the back of the net. Frankly, I was disappointed in, in that. I, I hear you. I feel you a hundred percent. And I'm still cracking up about 
<laughs> what Emily said. We, we want to see it. We want to see it. That's why we keep picking him. But look, to the victor goes the spoils, right? We gotta we gotta exactly. chat it up about racing Louisville a, a little bit. I'm I'm here for Jessica McDonald supremacy. I I am loving what this player has rapidly become for this franchise, uh, already showing in these early parts of the NWSL season why she was such a huge acquisition for them. And i am said it before, and I'm going to keep saying it, I'm, I'm really loving this sort of kind of early chemistry that we're seeing between McDonald specifically and Lauren Millay, uh, talking to her during our, our preview segment when we were saying, hey, we're going to do all these team previews in the off season. And when we got to racing Louisville's, we talked to Lauren Millay and we asked her about Jess McDonald and how eager, and she's talked about how eager she was to work with and play with Jess McDonald again, was with her on North Carolina Courage, but was a much younger player then and was eager to have the opportunity to learn more from her both on but specifically off the pitch as well just like this concept of like what yeah. it means to be a pro or or be a professional in nwsl and i really love that this was this kind of connection between the two of them to link up for this goal in this game i hope we continue to see it develop a little bit more and I think in this type of match to sort of get <laughs> to get this goal on on the road against, quite frankly, a Gotham FC side that's still trying to figure some things out. Yeah. There has to there was there had to have been some areas in which they were you know uh, making their game day preparations and said, listen, if we can maybe find moments of this game to press. Yeah, it was... and for some discomfort that maybe we can make some things happen because that's what looking at this racing Louisville side, there are moments where we see that mm -hmm. and they're, they look like this incredibly active team. They they have these stretches from these 15 minute, maybe even 20 minute stretches where they're like very active, higher up the pitch, trying to be you know applying the pressure. Then it wanes off a little bit, and I'm just like, you know, what happens to that? Well, that's tough if you're exactly. you're, when you're when you're trying to do that for a whole. Uh, 90 minutes, but I think in this game, it maybe was a little bit more nerve wracking for me watching because I'm like, God, any minute here, any second here, Gotham is going to get one of these to go in. And it just didn't happen. They like had so many breakaway opportunities that uh, I, I wanted them to just go a little bit faster <laughs> or stronger. No. I don't know. I was like, it, it was just those moments where they could have uh, gotten goals and frankly just did not put it away but uh, you mentioned okay. the jess mcdonald lauren malay combination i love that and even on the celebration you could see jess mcdonald was like that was good let's do it again yeah. and malay is just like so excited and celebrating which is what she should be but then mcdonald is there to kind of be the the leader of that group as a 10-year vet yeah. in the league to take racing louisville to new heights yeah, and it's a team with a lot of young, uh, much younger players, right? Yeah, Emily absolutely. Fox still having really good games for this team. Uh, there are two rookies in, in Jalen Howell and Savannah DeMello. I, I really like what they're presenting in in the middle third for for racing. But you know, it's a long season, and there's teams that have other more experienced players maybe a in the middle. So we're gonna see season. what happens. So you got it. You know, in this league, it's tough to get points. We heard these players say this all the time, and they're walking away with all three and a high place in the standings for them. Let's move on to another game that had a very, very slim scoreline, 0-0, zero, zero, in fact. Uh, the third meeting for these two teams in a month. Uh, and last. Final meeting. And last, and last. Meeting for the regular season. O.L. Rain hosted Washington Spirit at Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington. These two teams played out to a 0-0 zero, zero draw. And uh, listen, when we talked about it on the preview. Lisa, what did we pick? What, what, what were we looking at? You had a draw between O.L. Rain and Washington, and I had O.L. Rain getting uh, their first win uh, against Ugh. this team. And they Look. neither – well, your your draw happened, but O.L. Rain still searching for their first win over Washington Spirit. Listen, the rivalry I know, continues. I know for, for us on, you know, on, on this side of things where we're watching – this type of game we 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 love it we love the energy we're feeding off of it we're like yes this is awesome it's it's this kind of you know this is special type of rivalry between these two teams that isn't fixated on geographical region or location right it's uh it's two teams that just go out there and like to to battle each other 
And the fact that we've seen so many of these matches this early on between these two sides, I'm a little curious if they even are going to meet each other in a potential uh, postseason battle. Who who knows? So we we'll just, we'll the literally time. have to wait now. Because yes, that's it's so the much only time we would see them again. The fact that they've played each other in such quick succession at the start of this season between Challenge Cup and, and now the regular season, there was so much familiarity almost, yeah. almost too much that – you could predict and and throughout this match, I mean, starting lineups, we, we like to look at those and kind of break it down. Ashley Sanchez higher up the pitch higher against up. Chris Ward for Washington Spirit, leaving a bit of a hole. Um, we talked about player availability. Andy Sullivan available in this one. Kelly O'Hara yeah. available for Washington Spirit in this one. Uh, limited minutes for both of those players, but we did both see them get in, which is I- incredible to see, um, especially Andy Sullivan coming back after. A, tough injury that she was out for such a long time with that one. But having Ashley Sanchez up the field is it's choice. It's a choice. I love that's that, all I'm gonna say because I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with Chris Ward recently and and I haven't called one of their games recently. And maybe there's a very good rhyme or reason for that. And maybe we're we know that Ashley Sanchez can produce goals. Yeah. That is obvious. And maybe having her higher up the pitch is something that they're hoping to get a little bit more out of her and having more goals in her, but being closer to the goal, you just get them out of her a little bit. But this just opens up such a big hole in the midfield, especially without Andy Sullivan in there. And that's what is missing right now for Washington. Um, but I, I, I loved this game, frankly. We're I talking did. about what's what's mission, what's missing for, for the spirit. I think when we're looking at the rain, Lisa, we got to talk about what's missing for them. And it's just straight up goals. They cannot score. The, it's 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 like are they snake fit right now a little bit like I, I maybe and maybe the same thing can can be echoed for a team like like Gotham FC but when we're just looking and keeping this focus on, on the rain and and the talent that they have on their pitch and the numbers that they produce in these games we're talking they close out this one with with twenty shot with shot twenty shots and eight attempts on target and, and none of them going in. And then, you know, again, the, the scoreless uh, draw that they had with, with, with thorns, you know, mm-hmm. 17 shots there and only, you know, a handful on, on, on target there. It's just uh, it, it, the finishing just isn't there for this team right now. And uh, it, sure. Everyone could say that it's, it's early, but is, is there a certain, is there a timeline? Is there a timeline here where, where you look at this team and if they're still producing this similar results, do you say that this, this is concerning and has to be, you know, addressed in some type of way? I think the lack of scoring goals is is always concerning because as a team defensively, you cannot rely on your defense, your goalkeepers to win you games. That That's supposed to be your last resort. That's supposed to be, hey, thanks, you bailed us out this time because we only got one and you kept a clean sheet. That can't be the solution throughout an entirety of a season when – You need to win games. You can't just rely on shutouts like in a match like this. Um, A a lot of people giving high praise to Aubrey Kingsbury. Yes, an incredible goalkeeper. A a really good game by her in goal by Washington Spirit. But so much of it reflects on the goal scorers for OL Reign and the fact that there really isn't one. I mean, even throughout the Challenge Cup, all of their goals were split amongst 10 different players or so which is is a positive thing when you're getting a lot of different players opportunities to score goals and they're able to put them away. But when you don't have one person that can consistently find the back of the net, that's a danger. That's a, that's a a red flag in your team. Um, I think Bethany Bowser could have been that for them or still could be for that for them. Bowser actually ended up going down and with a bit of an injury throughout this match. I don't have an update on her personally. I, I don't know if you do, but that was a bit scary and a bit concerning concerning to see her getting helped off the field. Um, it, it did not look great. She looked to be in a lot of pain. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're with, when one of the thing, one of the questions that you're asking yourself as a club in terms of, you know, if it's something related to the goal scoring or, or, the, or the lack of finishing, that that is not something that you're excited about for an answer. Having one of your more dynamic strikers and forwards, mm-hmm come off of a tough game, uh, you know, in, in some pain or, or injured, that's uh, that's not necessarily going to help this team at the moment find more answers when it comes to the finishing, um, especially with a player like a Balser who has, has the ability to 
to be clinical at times and has the ability yeah. to kind of score from wherever. This is a player that we've seen pretty pretty even in the final third. You could get him with her head, left or right foot, you know, and and uh, having, even though the team is sort of hitting some some offensive struggles right now, that's definitely not something that you want to see happen uh, in a game like this as you're searching for, for the production. But uh, again, a, another team that we're talking about we saw find finding success mm -hmm. in a challenge cup and uh still looking for a way to kind of translate that in in the regular season it's uh it's going to be something that we got to keep an eye on uh for sure but uh, another result it's not a loss it's a point for this oil rain side in, in the column and uh, for the Washington spirit as well. And, and like Rose Lavelle said, we had an interview with her this week, everybody. So if you haven't checked it out, go out, go in and go and listen to it uh, if you get the chance after this. But I'm sure they're they're tired of each other. Uh, yeah. Rose Lavelle mentioning it's uh, like, that's enough. <laughs> Let's move yeah. on. Let's. And, uh... Exactly. I'm like, do we freeze? On the no, sorry, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and not just tired of each other, but also tired of playing and tired of going back and forth so much and, and just needing a bit of a break with so many quick turnaround games. Um, and now that that happens a little bit at least. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with this team moving forward and the spirit as well, because they had a match heavy load as well. Oh, yeah. uh, hopefully they'll come out on the uh, more positive end of it moving forward. But last one for the night, everybody, Portland Thorns FC versus Houston Dash. We had to save this one. We had to save this one because this was another one where I think that we did not get the prediction right. And this one, I think I was going Thorns in this one. Yeah, we both had Thorns. Oh, man. Down. Listen, Houston Dash said, pause that. On hold, please. They took the win in this one. 2-0 goals from Rachel Daly and Sophie Schmidt. Man, Portland Thorns. Maybe maybe similar uh, similar questions that we're asking uh, uh, from O.L. Reign, but also of, of Portland Thorns as well. No, I think Portland can score. Okay. I think Portland knows how to score and they can score. I, I honestly don't think it's the same type of questions. I think that more of the focus in this match uh, for me was on Houston because this is a team yeah. that is incredibly unpredictable and they can use it to their advantage in, in a match like this against Portland and come out and, and have Rachel Daly on fire. Um, the goal that Rachel Daly scored, her composure, her commitment to swag and to being just such a threat in front of the net and knowing, hey, there's two, three defenders on me. It's fine. I'll make them all fall to the ground and find the back of the net. So easy. That's that's Rachel Daly to a T. And the unpredictability about Houston Dash is that we haven't seen this team play this yeah. type of game in many games, in weeks. Yeah weeks and then the fact that something can happen they flip a switch maybe it was traveling to providence park and playing in that type of arena where everyone is fired up for your opponent that it, it's a chip on your shoulder and it's like no we're gonna prove these suckers wrong and and everyone that picked against us and that's exactly what we saw i mean the rachel daly goal was great the sophie schmidt goal i'm gonna say a little mm -hmm. bit of luck on this one listen Wild angle. I love a goal happening from a wild, wild angle. When I, I saw it happening, that. I don't listen, think she meant to shoot that. When I saw it happening in real time, I was like, gosh, that looks awfully familiar. Where did I see that before? And Katie Johnson scored a similar goal in a similar area during the 2021 mm -hmm. semifinal against against Bixby there. It's a it's a, such an awkward angle, but apparently a uh, sweet spot. Maybe if opposition are looking to to try a curious angle, just like if, if you have the opportunity to just try it with, with the time and the space and why not and see what happens. I think Sophie Smith at one point, you know, looking with the body language a little bit like, Whoa, like that one. And I love the the celebration uh, afterwards after a type of goal like that. But it, it was a goal that provided, you know, a little bit of, of insurance, a little bit of a cushion for for this team uh, on the road, you know, doing some good things. The, the Dash are uh, maybe surprising some other people, maybe even surprising themselves a, a little bit. You know, who, so. who knows? It's, it's early in the season to where it's like you can – when I think about this goal from – from Sophie Smith, it's like, why not just try some things and exactly. just sort of see um, what happens? But I, I mean, I loved it. The the timing of when these goals happened as well. I, I love that they got this this goal in 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 the winding minutes of the first half. You know, Sounds on the road, yeah, you, you ha yeah you, you're forcing the home side to to chase. 
and loving the link up with, you know, Nichelle Prince and Rachel Daly. We talked a lot in, in previous um, episodes and in our preview of this Houston dash team specifically that we wanted to see that, that, this sort of frontline trio of, of a daily of, of Prince of, of Sanchez that can be so much fun. It has a lot of potential to rival other attacks in the league. So whenever some combination of this trio is, is looking as if they're firing on, on cylinders, I think it's very exciting and very good for, for Houston, but also seeing this goal from Sophie Smith happen past the hour mark. That's, that's that's a very important time to be able to sort of, you know, make sure that you sort of get this go ahead goal and get that insurance. You know, as you're sort of taking a game like this, maybe in phases, if you're the visiting side exactly. on the road. So um, good win, I think, for, huge. for them. Huge. And and you mentioned um, for Houston and Schmidt getting the goal right after the 60 minute mark is big because a team like Portland in the 70th minute can still come back and score a couple goals. They can get something going. They can find something, especially with the home crowd on their side throughout a match like this. So a little bit of insurance from Sophie Schmidt. And I mean, it was an incredible goal. And we don't see that from Sophie Schmidt a lot. She's not a player that is finding the back of the net. She's that final pass player. That's who you want to get the ball to when you need someone to split the seams and, and lay it in beautifully on a dime to a forward running in. But Schmidt can do it all herself. Um, yeah, this this was a interesting game. It was a crazy game. Neither of us had him pegged, but no. Houston, they walk away with three points out of Providence Park. Wow. You, you love you love to see it. It's it's early, Lisa, but I I know you you you've got an eye on it. What are what are the standings for folks to sort of take a look at before we close out? I love running off these standings, leading the way, both expansion sides, number one and number two, San Diego wave sits at number one with 12 points, angel city, number two, nine points racing Louisville, third place, fourth place is Houston dash. Their three points against Portland jumped them up in the standings. Number five, Orlando pride, number six, Chicago red stars. Um, this seven through 12, everyone listen yep. up. This is week four or five of the NWSL. Number seven, Portland Thorns. Number eight, Washington Spirit. Number nine, Gotham FC. Ten, OL Reign. Eleven, Kansas City. And coming in in last place, number 12 with zero points, North Carolina Courage. Still searching for first win, their first tie in this regular season. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. Look. Another content note for everyone before we close out. I mentioned it at the top of the episode. I'm going to mention it here again. We're going to keep the lives going. We love whenever you all get a chance to hang out with us and get our reactions to things. So we're going to be going live on Thursdays for the next few weeks uh, due to there being some midweek matches on the NWSL schedule for the foreseeable future. So make sure you tune in with us 